Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about synthetic division and the remainder theorem. Now, before we can really talk about that, I want to discuss the division algorithm because this comes up a lot with synthetic division. So the division algorithm, there's, there's a lot of words here. <laughs> But so let's say I'm dividing f of x by g of x. g of x is some polynomial that is of lesser degree than f of x. So when you do this, f of x divided by g of x, you get two unique polynomials, q of x and r of x, so that you can rewrite f of x like this. So you might be kind of scratching your head saying, okay, what? Um, so f of x equals g of x times q of x plus r of x. So this is just a way of, this is like another way of expressing the result of your division. So I'll show you how this works. If you're scratching your head, don't worry, we'll make sense of it in this video. Okay, now before I can talk about synthetic division, I think it's really helpful to review regular old polynomial division. So I've got x squared minus 3x minus 1 divided by x plus 2. Okay, so I think you'll get the most out of this if you actually try this on your own. So I recommend that you pause the video and just give this a try and then hit play when you get stuck. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to think about just first terms here, x and x squared. Specifically, what do I multiply x by to get to x squared? And you would say you multiply x by x. x times x equals x squared. So then you take x times this whole thing here. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then you subtract this entire result off. So there's kind of a lot of pieces that go into polynomial division. So now if I subtract this off, x squared minus x squared and x squared cancel out. Now don't forget about the minus sign here. I've got negative 3x minus 2x. That's going to give me negative 5x. So then I bring down the negative 1 and I start the process over. What do I multiply x by to get to negative 5x? Well, that would be negative 5. And now I take negative 5 times all of this. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, and then I subtract this whole result off. Now, if the minus signs kind of freak you out, which they freak me out, um, I like to just rewrite that this is all addition so that I don't forget. I'm very likely to make an, a little error with this. So now I have my 5x's drop out, negative 1 plus 10 is 9, and so then you have this reminder, remainder of 9 over x plus 2. Now if you're asking yourself, how did I get this plus sign, it's because 9 is positive. If 9 were, if this were negative 9, then this would be a minus sign here. So that's how you determine the, the sign. And 9 just goes over whatever you divided by. All right. So polynomial division, maybe not great, right? <laughs> like there's just a lot of stuff to remember with it. And I feel like you're really likely to make an error with it. So what if I told you there is an easier way to do polynomial division? All right. Well, with that, now drum roll, da -da 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 -da, synthetic division. Woohoo. All right. So let me show you how synthetic division works. It really simplifies the whole thing. So synthetic division, we set up maybe in a slightly similar way. Okay, so step one, you want to take, um, so let, let's, let, let, me, let me go like this. This is negative two. So you write the opposite. So maybe I'll just put a note. So write the, we call this the additive inverse. Write the additive inverse here. So I'll just put a little note there. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do is what do we put under here? So all we have to do to put under, um, the, the division symbol are the coefficients of our polynomial. So coefficients here. So one negative three and negative one. So I literally just took all the coefficients here. Okay. So now this is going to be pretty cool. So the, the next thing with synthetic division is we're going to leave one space, draw a line. The first thing that we're going to do is just bring the one down. Okay. And now this is going to go pretty quickly. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do one times negative two, I'm going to write that result right here, negative two. And then I'm going to add these two numbers here. So this becomes negative five. 
And then I'm going to repeat that process. Negative 5 times negative 2. This becomes positive 10. Add negative 1 and 10. That becomes 9. Don't those numbers seem familiar to you? So the interpretation of this result now is, so we think of the answer down here, we think of this in terms of being one degree less of the original polynomial. So what I mean is, if this started at x squared, then this is going to be your x column, this is going to be your constant column, and this is going to be your remainder column. So you always just adjust it one degree less. So we'll see some more examples of this as we go along. So the interpretation then, the answer that we're looking for is that this would be x minus 5 plus 9 over x plus 2. Whoa! So it's the same thing, right, but it went much faster. Now, an alternative way that we can express this result is using the division algorithm. So I just want to take a second to express it this way. So the original polynomial that we were working with was x squared minus 3x minus 1, and we were dividing by x plus 2. So the q of x part of this is everything that's not the remainder. So that would be x minus 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as, uh, let me go back, x minus 5. And then when you're using the division algorithm, so instead of having to put the remainder over the divisor, instead you can just write the remainder. Boom, done. So these are two different ways to express division. Um, and just depending on what you're doing, it can be stronger to think of division as one way versus another. So we just want to kind of prep our brains to think of division also like this, which is a way that we don't usually think about it. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to show you another example using synthetic division again. So now I've got 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7 divided by x plus 1. And then we're going to restate using the division algorithm. Okay, so to set up the synthetic division. Okay, so on the outside here, you take the additive inverse of your divisor, so negative 1. Now, when you set up your coefficients, you want to go in descending order. So in this case, we're starting at x cubed. So I have 4 in the x cubed position. Now pay attention to this for a second. I have negative 3 in the x squared position. Now there's nothing for x, right? So if we were going in true descending order, then we'd have an x next, right? So when that happens, you're going to put a 0 in as a placeholder. And then the last thing was this negative 7, so there's the constant. Okay, so now let's do the synthetic division. I'm going to draw a line, bring the 4 down. All right, and now it's just this game of this times this. So that's negative 4. And so if I add those together, this becomes negative 7. Now I take negative 7 times negative 1. That becomes 7. 0 and 7 is 7. And then 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. Okay, now in this case, we started at x cubed. So we want to adjust everything over 1 degree. So in this case, I'm going to start with x squared, x, this is my constant, and this is my remainder. Okay, so the way I would write out this answer then, so maybe I'll just write the answer here. So this division, or maybe I'll write it here, I'll write it here. This is going to be 4x squared minus 7x plus 7 minus 14 over x plus 1. That's one way to interpret this, okay? Now, if I wanted to express this result using the division algorithm, so let's write that out. So what I would have then is 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7. This equals x plus 1. That's what I was dividing by. And then I write this result, the part without the remainder, first. So that was 4, 4x four squared minus 7x plus 7 and then the remainder by itself, minus 14. There you go. And so that is synthetic division. So there's really three keys to synthetic division that I want to point out. So the divisor needs to be of the form either x minus k or x plus k. And then 
when you're right when you're choosing your k you take whatever the opposite sign is so we've, we've kind of seen that um two you want to include zeros as placeholders if needed and then three you want to make sure that you're using the right value of k so you always want to take the additive inverse of your divisor is the way we would describe that now related to synthetic division is the remainder theorem this is kind of cool so if a polynomial is divided by x minus k then the remainder is equal to f of k. So again, notice that this is kind of like an opposite symbol thing, okay? So um, what I wanna do is I wanna now use the remainder theorem to find the value of some of these functions. And then I also wanna re-express the function using the division algorithm. Okay, so let's say that I wanna find what is the value of f of two for this expression here. Okay, so what I, what I can do then is I can evaluate. So we're gonna evaluate f of x, I don't want to rewrite that all out, but I want to evaluate f of x divided by x minus 2. This is what I'm actually going to set up. So this is, or this is the, the division that I'm actually doing. So I'm going to put the 2 here, and then what do I write underneath? Well, I actually think this is a great time for you to try your own synthetic division problem, so I recommend that you pause here for a moment, try the synthetic division, and hit play when you're ready. All right, so I have negative three, five. So notice I'm going x fourth, x to the third. There's no x squared, so I'm gonna put in a zero placeholder, negative 30 and 20. Okay, so now I draw a line. I write negative three here. Negative three times two is negative six. Add those, this becomes negative one. Negative, two, negative one times two is negative two. Add those together, I get negative two. Negative two times two is going to be negative 4, so this becomes negative 34. Negative 34 times 2 is going to be negative 68, so if I add those together, I get negative 48. So now let's unpack what results we have. First of all, what is the value of f of 2? It would be negative 48. Now that's actually kind of cool if you think about it, because I think it would take you a while to think through what is the value of f of 2. If I just ask you to like brute force it and calculate it by hand, right? So this was actually kind of a, a neat party trick. Now, if I wanna write this in terms of the division algorithm, so I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'll just write f of x equals, so this expression here, what does it equal? Okay, the thing I technically divided by was x minus two, and then, so this starts one degree less, so this will be negative three x cubed, minus x squared, minus 2x, minus 34, and then the remainder was minus 48. So there is how we could think of the expression. Okay, so next we're going to find the value of a function for a given k. This is literally the same thing as before. f of x equals 3x squared plus 5, and now notice my k is something kind of weird, 3 minus i. So this is actually pretty cool because um, I, I think this, well, you can make up your own mind, but like you can basically do a calculation, right, with 3 minus i in maybe a more efficient way. Okay, so I want to find the value of f of k. Now, just remember, the equivalent of that is that you are going to take f of x divided by x minus k. These two things kind of go hand in hand. It can get a little confusing with the symbols here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is then I can just take this k and I can just write it right here in the synthetic division. Now when I set this up, this is going to be 3, 0, and 5 because I'm missing the x. Okay, so I draw my line here. I have a 3. Now I take 3 times 3 minus i, so that becomes 9 minus 3i. So this becomes 9 minus 3i. Now when I take 9 minus 3i times 3 minus i, you'll notice that we have a little bit of work to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and write this off to the side, 3 minus i and 9 minus 3i. So this equals, let's see, 27 minus 9i minus 9i plus 3i squared. Uh, is that 3i? Yes, plus 3i squared. Okay, now plus 3i squared is going to become minus 3 because i squared is equal to negative 1, right? So i squared is equal to negative 1. So we can get rid of the i squared and just change the sign. So then this equals, let's see, 24 minus 18i, right? So I have 
24 minus 18i, and so then if I add these together, I get 29 minus 18i. So what is the value of f of 3 minus i equals 29 minus 18i? Okay, and so that brings us to the end of this video. So I have a lot more examples of synthetic division in other videos. So we'll just end it here and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.